In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem us who are under the law. And so it is the case that in Jesus Christ, all that came before under shadows and types and prophecies was, as St. Irenaeus would say, recapitulated and fulfilled in this righteous one, so that we who possess no righteousness in ourselves might have his righteousness credited to us by faith for the forgiveness of sins. And so he was therefore presented at the temple, and the life of two doves stood in for him, so that in time the one upon whom the dove, the Holy Spirit, descended might stand in place for the world. And dear Christians, not only for the world, the Lutheran Church never speaks in mere generalities, but as Luther says about the words of institution, quote, read yourself into this word, you, given and shed for you. Read yourself into this word, you, so that Jesus may not speak to you in vain. The gospel, of course, which is a universal proclamation, is also a particular promise to every heart that believes what God has said. Christ, therefore, was presented for you, as it is written in the law of the Lord, quote, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. All those who had previously first opened the womb were called holy to the Lord. And this was, of course, because there was an appointed one, even the very Son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is holy, and who is holiness incarnate, and the fulfillment of all those holy ones who had come before opening the wombs of their mothers. In the Blessed Virgin Mary, a womb was miraculously opened, without the assistance of a man, as we might say. The Son of God was conceived of the Holy Ghost, even as the Church confesses in the Creed. And again and thereafter, being the sole begotten of the Father, and the newborn Son of the Virgin Mary, he was presented, and sacrifice was offered according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And what a place the two turtle doves, or perhaps they were pigeons, what a place they served in this regard. Those two turtle doves, whose lives were sacrificed in place of this 40-day-old boy, would, in a certain sense, be the last. Surely, of course, many were sacrificed after, as the Son of God matured to his 33rd year. But these two in particular, offered in place of the holy infant, were those last sacrificed to the fulfillment of what all sacrifices aimed toward, namely the preparing of the way of the Holy One of God. He needn't, of course, have had them sacrificed in his place, but he willingly submits even to this ceremonial law in order that, fulfilling it, he might set it aside. He would go forth from the Jordan, filled with the Holy Spirit, and be marked out as the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. And he is offered in such way as to purify for himself a holy people, to purify for himself his precious bride, the Church. And so in the intro appointed for today, we prayed in part, quote, We have thought on your steadfast love, O God, in the midst of your temple. Now the psalm, of course, is a psalm of praise to God, for great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, as the psalmist also writes in verse 1. And the praise of God is in particular concerned with Zion, the city of God, and more particularly still, the temple in the midst of Zion. Zion, which means something like the highest point. And so we also heard from the psalmist in the intro, his holy mountain, beautiful in elevation. When you travel to Mount Zion, you're always going up, even if you're coming from the north. Uh, beautiful in elevation is the joy of all the earth. Mount Zion in the far north, the city of the great king. It is a type of the new heavens and the new earth, even as we see the temple of God descending from the heavens in the book of Revelation. And that these verses in the intro is appointed for the feast of the purification of Mary, suggests likewise a typology between the mother of our Lord 
who brings forth God in the flesh, and the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, which, as Luther says, brings forth us all through the washing of water by the word. Mary, for her part, is brought for purification following childbirth, even as the church is also purified by the selfsame Son of God, so that he might present her to himself without spot or blemish or any such thing. And in his mystical bride, the Holy Christian Church, is gathered a people who have fought and continue to think on the steadfast love of God in the midst of his raised and glorified temple that is his body. Now to think upon something is to fix one's mind upon it, to meditate upon it. In this case, it isn't a passing thought as one might have in consideration of what he has just eaten or the tasks he might do the next day. This is a ruminating thought, an ever-returning-to kind of thought. And what, dear Christians, do we think on in the midst of God's temple? That is, what do we think of in the midst of that holy place? And even, now privileged through the flesh of Jesus, the holy of holies, what we think upon his steadfast love. We think upon the steadfast love of God come through the Lord Jesus Christ. We could not purify ourselves, but were in need, and the presented Lord met such a need. You are indeed without spot or blemish, without any such thing, blameless in his sight, for you have been washed with pure water and marked out as his own. And this Holy One presented at the Lord's temple to fulfill what we could not, Likewise, also presents himself continually to his dear people. He presents himself to you here at the highest of all places, even the altar of the living God, who does not expect bloody or bloodless sacrifices, as in the case of the abomination of the sacrifice of the Mass, but he offers the fruit of his sacrifice to you, so that eating and drinking the very body and blood of the Son of God, you would receive the forgiveness of sins and receive his divine life. And so, dear Christians, think on these things, the very steadfast love of God in the midst of this holy temple from this time forth and even forevermore. To Christ be all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.